uh, terribly. Why does it slip through? Last pick for Cloud9. It was usually first ban. And EE plays a very nasty Terrorblade. Yeah, well, we saw Secret target Cloud9. They banned out a Visage and a Terrorblade, and I believe it was their first two bans. And now Fnatic are going to let them both through. It's not like they don't know what Cloud9 like to play, or anyone likes to play for that matter. Both those heroes, bit of a resurgence. Terrorblade mainly because you can actually play him now. Uh, but yeah, it's going to come out for Eternal Envy. But I haven't actually seen him in 6.82c, so we'll see how much the changes have affected him. And with a Spectre, you're a very, very unlead to aggro try. And Terrorblade, actually, I think one of his weaknesses is uh, dying early to aggro try and being shut down in that sense. So C9 won't have to worry about that. Or shouldn't have to. Prepare for battle. Whoa, this Spectre set is awesome. The Volatile Firmament. I like the weapon. All right. Oh yeah, the Immortal. I was I was lucky enough to get that one. I was pretty excited about it. Sold the Fuser. And I guess that's just well, where we will start with the introduction. So it's going to be Hani here for Fnatic on the Dire. And this Best of One, the Summit 2, will be playing the Spectre. Over on the Death Prophet, it's going to be Arise in the middle lane. And hopefully he'll be faring a little bit better than Feta did last time. But Feta should know what he has to do to shut it down. He's been in that situation. Uh, we've got Ace on the Batrider, Rise playing on the Ogre Magi, and it's going to be Come With Me here on the Crystal Maiden, supporting up. So C9 is aware that the ward is down there. They pretty much saw Ace walk up and place it as a Batrider, but they don't have any sentries. Uh, they can play around it, though. It's very important. Tinkbot's got it. Yeah. He brought him out to AUI. Oh, nice. It's smart of him to save gold for that, and this is... Well, just makes it life a lot more difficult for the Death Prophet if she doesn't have as much vision for the supports, especially for a very aggressive one like Ventral Spirit. You can already see that she's posted up near that top spot to pressure the uh, pressure the Death Prophet very early. Yeah, is also looking for the runes. It will be actually the haste in the bottom lane going to go over to Rise, and maybe he can get something done with that. Probably not, but actually, Bone Seven chasing come with me away. And well, he's gonna go through the tree line and he'll juke back over there to the tower to safety, forcing out some regen. Only two tankos left now, as one of those he pulled over to a rise in the middle lane. And looks like Rise will be standing at that magic bush to stop some of the uh, creep spawns, but not completely necessary. I guess they do. Um, I always mean, does love to pull them, but she can just take them um, themselves with Crystal Maiden if they want to roam down that route. Yeah, so it looks like we got a duo offlane here uh, with Ace and Rise, the Ogre and the Bat. Do you do you think they're going to go for any early points in Bloodlust just to like run them down with Firefly, or just putting two bodies here to sort of disrupt Eternal Envy's farming in the early game? They just want to disrupt Eternal Envy's farming in the early game. I mean, they can potentially have a turnaround. Um, and without Ventral Spirit here, it's actually very difficult for Radiant to do anything about these uh, two farmers. And Visage is very easy to kill too, so he can't really harass a Batrider oh, wow. and the Ogre Magi too much. So yeah, EE um, e not going to have an easy time. Yeah, and then we'll look over to the middle lane right now. So far, Faded doing very well. 7-1, and one, already more last hits than he had in about... 10 minutes probably in the last game so he's feeling much better arise at four and zero this lane both heroes should be able to get their fair share of the farm who do you favor in this matchup i would say panda just because his ultimate's ridiculous and can kill death prophet with a haste rune whereas like if death prophet gets a good rune she still can't kill the panda so slightly more brewmaster brewmaster also has um, pretty high base damage and crit and evasion has a little bit of everything. Oh, he's the whole package. Yeah, I know. We, we, we love Brewmaster. Uh, Pilot Eye already <laughs> eagerly awaiting the rune. He'll find the double damage. The bounty bot lane for Rise will pick that up, and Pilot Eye was already poised in the top lane, looking for blood. Uh -oh. and he might find it here in the middle lane. The magic missile onto a Rise. That's going to slow him down. Can Feta get in range for the clap? No, he cannot. Pilot Eye, I'm thinking maybe he should have went over for a body block instead of the wave of tear. I don't know. Slowed him up a I little bit. I actually think Fada could have pressed up a little bit more when her rise was down in the middle of the river he, he had almost no vision over um that top cliff when he was there but still rise getting zoned out pretty hard by pilot eye even though pilot eye doesn't have any mana nice double damage though and it's on avenge so the potential for the armor reduction and a little bit more damage output 
Uh, but yeah, he'll stick around for now. Maybe looking for the courier snipe because it is coming out. It's Squawkins with the bottle, but Pile Die turns back towards the jungle and we'll head back top where we find Hani on the Spectre sitting at 6 and 4 in CS. And who is farming in that lane? It's going to be Bone 7 on the Legion, 14 and 5, so doing very nicely with the overwhelming odds. Yeah, he's getting a lot of farm and honey, going the more old school build with the level 1 dispersion early. It's very nice at level 1, and a lot of players will go for the desolate instead, but dispersion is a very good choice. I actually prefer dispersion myself. Yeah, I, f I feel if you're going against an offlaner, I will get desolate just because if you do find him, he's generally alone. But if there's more than one person there, then desolate won't even ever be active, so yeah. Or also even you if might you not just die. get if you get harassed too, it's pretty much yeah. almost like free regen in that sense too. And he's been harassed a lot with the overwhelming odds. And we see EE switch to the jungle uh, this early into the game, which is pretty nice for him, I'd say, because now we can get some free levels on bottom. But at the same time, Ogre and Batrider are just having their way. Yeah, and he can definitely jungle pretty early. There's gonna be the first blood up top though. They'll find uh, Pile Die. He rotates back over. I don't. I guess it's just the Crystal Maiden that starts that off. Throws out the Nova. Come with me's gone one one one. So he's got the uh, Arcane Aura up for his squad as well, which is actually we didn't really talk about it. Some decent synergy with the Death Prophet who just you know spam City in the middle lane with that Crypt Swarm. Obviously she's got a bottle up. We'll find runes or Bottle Crow, but any little bit of extra mana is gonna help. And for Ogre, too, since he has HP regen, too. He can stay away from base much, much longer. And with that early Orb of Venom and early Ignite, that is a lot of move speed slow. Yeah, I really like getting the Orb on him. Sure, it's a bit of a gold investment for support. It might delay wards or a courier upgrade, but it's pretty brutal. Now Hani in the, in the top lane in a little bit of trouble. The Soul Assumption goes out. 189 with the red damage, but it's still not going to be enough. And come with me. I, don't, he, I guess he's a little slow right now. The Boots of Speed could have maybe have gotten there for a Frostbite, but hard to get a kill with Press the Attack now, skilled up on Legion. Yeah, Inspector's forced to bring himself more Regen too. Or oh, here's the mid lane. This is what you talked about. Brewmaster hitting level 6. He's now got the kill potential on Arise, and what's he going to do? He's going to kill Arise. Juking through the tree line to try to stay alive a little bit longer, and whoa, what's going to happen here? You got the Immolate damage still ticking up from the Fire Panda, who's almost able to bring it down but there's no help coming in at all because up top they're also in a bit of trouble there's going to be the specter finally falling that's the sole assumption from aui 2000 bringing down the spec yeah legion commander is just able to pressure the offlane so hard compared to a lot of other offlaners just because if you're in like a three-on-one situation that press uh, overwhelming odds just does ridiculous amounts of damage and oftentimes people run around or run out of regen around this time and that's when you just swoop in with your supports picking an easy kill on a very high priority uh, specter yeah I, I like to say that the spell was very adequately named it, it basically will work when you're outnumbered <laughs> uh whether it be 1v3 1v2 i really like what they've done with this though right like overwhelming odds it's fantastic a we damage that charges your soul assumption and I do find a lot of times, if you just put the Legion off lane, she can't quite find the kill on her own sometimes, but add one more person making a 2v3 and clearly they're not having too much trouble finding those kills. Yeah, things might have been a little bit different had they had the sentry, uh, the Observer Ward over here, but they had the sentry there, so they, they're they not really safe in that top lane at all. Yeah, and actually Pilot Die just took a spill. He gets uh, Dove under the tower there by Ace and Rise. And Look who at actually Ace's got it? it was the Ogre Magi. He has 2,000 already. This He's be... really close to Blink Dagger. <laughs> Up top, the duel! That was the duel on Zahani! They won't find the kill, so no one's a victor. It's it's just a tie. So no winner fanfare. Hani jukes over to the tree line. Eight tangos. Those are fresh tangos. Like, he bought more. Yeah, he had As to. you said, running out of regen, so... Well... And mana boots for Ryze. Blink Dagger for Batrider. It's about to get pretty scary down here in this bottom lane. Yeah, I think they could have just let Bone 7 off to his own devices on top and try to have Pilot Die on bottom, but Pilot Die have been relatively or unsuccessful with this game. So Rise, though, maybe he'll be the first spoil. Nope. Oh, nope. Creep's gonna spoil it, unfortunately, for, for Pilot Die. He even smoked up for that, too, just by himself. We're trying to wrap around for that, for that kill. 
and now Batrider is going to have Blink Dagger before the level 6 on Ventral Spirit. Terror Blade doesn't really have that many items too. They have an Observer Ward to find them, and he's very vulnerable uh, to this Batrider. He can go crazy too. Spectre is going to hit 6 very soon too, so I feel a lot of pressure coming C9's way, unless Panda can mitigate it around the map. And he almost has Blink Dagger. Yeah. The Haunt, though, with just one point in Desolate, and the Haunt did lose some of its damage going into 6.82c. It maybe won't be underwhelming, but a little less than what it was previously. Come with me is gonna find a Visage and a Legion Commander in the woods. Not a good place to run into either of those heroes. Press the attack to get that off. Soul Assumption, they need one more click, but I don't think they're gonna find it. And now Ace has rotated up. Could get the kill here on AUI. Actually, I think they're gonna get them both. Lasso onto Bone 7, as there's really nothing to get them out of the Lasso. And Bone 7 is gonna fall. Fata rotates over, though. Does have a Primal Split if he wants to throw it, but probably not the best use. He, he finds his Blink now and would rather save the ultimate to just Blink Initiate at a later date. Yeah, he'd probably actually die if he uses Panda Ultimate. Spectre can just run into the trees, Batrider can just fly over the trees too, and then they can catch him since he doesn't have his Blink Tiger yet. So I think it was a good choice by Fada not to use his split there. And yeah, now they're pu uh, getting punished for not having enough resources in the bottom lane. Ace with his Blink Tiger already scoring a couple of kills. Yeah, and I think you already touched on it, but get that up before another swap is available. So there's really nothing Venge can do besides a magic missile, which, you know, it could be enough. Press the attack and duel are here for Bone 7, but, well, Bone 7 just has to be the target of the bat, and then it's not too difficult. So in 30 seconds, we'll see what uh, Ace decides to do with that, as we'll see a rise. There are some stacks here, whether he did it himself or the supports. So he'll go try to clean them up. Come with me. Once the drop down award here, we'll find AUI, and I think he's going to be in some trouble. Hani, though, trying to get the desolate damage, press the attack, that extra regen coming in, and there's a duel online. He's just got to find Hani, but Hani, still with the spectral dagger, able to go through the tree line back to safety, because Feta has also rotated up here. In both of these games, we haven't really felt Death Prophet's presence at all. Like, I don't no. even know if an exorcism was, like, used on more than one tower in the last two games that we've seen together. And he's just always forced to live in constant fear. Even with a terror blade that hasn't made any sort of offensive maneuver at all, he can't come out. The Ventral with a stun and the Blink Dagger from Brewmaster, she's dead instantly. So she just can't do anything at all. Maybe um, if Batrider and Death Prophet hook up together, they can transition into a, into a tower, which they kind of need to do to alleviate some pressure from Spectre, and since, I mean, look at Spectre's position right now, she can't even farm at her T1. Yeah, she expects the aggression, but Fnatic are ready for it. They've got Come With Me and Ace here on the south side. Actually, the enemy side of the map gonna jump in and try to find a kill, but who do you find? Oh, they actually do get on the right one. They will haunt. The illusion goes out onto EE, but look at this metamorphous damage. There's too much to deal with. Hani's still gonna come in. Arise will fall. There's the Death Prophet we talked about just dying immediately, and well, she lives up to it. She dies immediately. Now Hani's in some trouble. There's the duel, and this should be the first victory of the game for that Legion. 10 damage coming in at 10 minutes, and you got Metamorphous. Sure it's about to run out. That illusion's got 10 seconds, so this tower is gonna die. And this is what people think is a balance about terribly. He doesn't really have any items, but the amount of damage that he puts out is insane. He has not that much attack speed, but enough. He has 80 from press to attack and about 40 from his treads. So we're looking at like 180 damage with over 100% attack speed. He just melts Death Prophet, and we saw Spectre die. We saw Batrider just immediately blow up too. Just, just pick Troll Warlord, and then you got all you need for attack speed. <laughs> Troll Warlord. Easy. Yeah, he's, he's uh, there were, I like him. Uh, there was a kill in the bottom lane as well while that was going on. It was Visage AUI picking up uh, Ryze's Ogre Magi. So one kill down there, but still losing that tower in the middle lane. Actually, yeah, and, and losing kills in the bottom lane. So things across the map over the last couple minutes haven't gone fantastic for Fnatic. We see Cloud9's Tricor lineup on the network. They're all leading right now as, oh, actually Crystal Maiden finds a kill there in the middle lane. Finally a successful smoke gank. And very important for them to try and transition this into a tower, but Exorcism gets nerfed and nerfed and nerfed and he won't have it up for this push and looks like they are actually trying to defend it. Pile I die heading that way now. Yeah. Well, he still wouldn't have had it, right? There's been 20 seconds added to it in the last two patches, so... Mm. Yeah, either way. Still not gonna be able to get it. The Fortify was, however, used. That slows down the push, actually stops it completely. So, obviously it'll be refreshed if any of these Tier 1 towers fall. 
The only tower down so far is this middle lane tier 1 that Cloud9 was able to claim where we saw Terrorblade's ridiculous damage. The one thing that really wasn't nerfed about the hero, but now we'll look to AUI. He's in some trouble. Hellbear looking for blood, won't find an ogre, denies the neutrals. He gets it with the fire blast. Yeah, and Bone 7 has a lot of gold too. He has a nice 2200. And his inventory and spends and it on a blink. EE e is doing a very good job of making good use of every metamorphosis cooldown. And every time he uses it, something goes down tower, three heroes in mid, and they just can't handle him. Yeah, another tower at bottom, and that's the problem with Crystal Maiden trying to deal with the Legion. You can still cast, and the Frostbite just puts the press the attack on, gets right out of it, wins the duel, might be chased down. There was a swap. That was an ally swap, looking to go back to safety, but I don't know if that was communicated, because Legion kind of fumbled with that. And it looks like they will still be able to run them both down. Pylai die. Well, buying some time, I guess. He will fall to double kill for a rise on the Death Prophet. So finally, her presence being felt a little bit there. 2-2-1, two, two, and one, but it could also have just been Cloud9 maybe a little over aggressive trying to find some kills in the middle lane but still he gets two towers with the help of Maui's uh, visage familiars and Terrorblade is getting fed well on his way to his Manta style and certainly a little bit more farm than the Spectre yeah, we're a Spectre. In terms of net worth, at 3.2k, Terrorblade at 5.6, so it's a pretty sizable difference. Actually, looking at the last hits, Terrorblade 54, but he's got some tower last hits as well. I should actually record that, honestly. Uh, and then 32 and 8, that's the Spectre's last hit deny. So, yeah, Terrorblade doing considerably better this game. Spectre is number 7 on net worth. He's behind the Ogre. Ogre's OP, though. Ogre is OP. <laughs> but he doesn't have That's all I pick in pubs now. It's easy to play, you win. Play play the lotto as well. Feels good. Right. I still can't get multicasts. Right trying to play the lotto versus Fada here and Fada does have his ult up. Oh up top, Hani's in trouble. He's gonna get dueled on. There's a soul assumption, the visage birds. Definitely a good support to the Legion Commander. So much damage and some extra stun coming out. As middle lane, there's some fighting going on. That's Fata with the double damage. He finds a rise. Does he, have, he does have the Primal Split, but he can't get it off. Ace jumps in with the lasso. We'll shut it down. Still a two kill advantage for Cloud9. Uh, but Fnatic at least find one there in the middle lane. But while they do that, they lose a tower. So it's like, yeah, we got a kill, but we're losing our map control pretty rapidly. And we have... Fnatic has yet to even take a tower. You can tell that Cloud9 is just a lot more coordinated in the way that they play around uh, terribly, and that the, the way they create space around the map and just pressure Fnatic at all points, whereas Fnatic, they haven't had a successful counter gank with Spectre, not even really a good successful gank with Spectre, and they haven't utilized Death Prophet's ultimate to secure a tower until just a second ago. It's 15 minutes in, and they only have one T1 down, and the other two T1s are barely touched, at least the top one isn't. Yeah, that was not denied. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's what happens, right? You give Cloud9, you let them play their draft, and they show it. Like, they know what they're doing. EE has been on point with his big cooldown, the 140 seconds of metamorphosis. He gets hero kills into objectives, or just plain old objectives every time he uses it. AUI and Bone7 are making incredible amounts of space, and actually, speaking of Bone7, he's going to pick up the Blade Mail, the Blink Dagger, looking to win some duels even more convincingly right now. He has, don't think he's lost any. A few have been drawn, but but he's been able to get 30 damage up on the Legion Commander, and you don't often see it, but this is a hero that scales infinitely, technically. As does Pudge. Pudge, best late game carry? Pudge, yeah. Pudge and Legion, that's, a, that's I think, all we got, right? Pudge really should be picked more. Well, that turn rate, come on. People, pick him up. Lasso to Familiar, so that's a good start for Ace for this team fight. They will still try to focus Bone 7 through it, and I think they will be able to bring him down, and Overwhelming Odds has dropped. And, well, that was just a scouting party of two, and despite the botched Lasso, Cloud9 pay uh, for being overextended in enemy territory. It's now 12-12, evened up on the scoreboard. Looking at the graph, it was Cloud9 about 5k ahead. Now, I think experience will be equilibrium after that exchange. Mm-hmm. And the problem with Spectre is just nowhere close to being able to catch up and farm. He can't really jungle that effectively, he can't push towers, and he really needs his team to be able to set up more kills for him. He's sitting at 1, 3, and 6 right now, and still number 7 on net worth. 1,000 gold behind the Ogre, and doubled, over doubled by Terrorblade. So that discrepancy is just very difficult to offset. 
Oh, Feta could have maybe split for that, but finds it a second too late. And you do need to start the primal split immediately. So Spectre is able to TP out, but that does mean Spectre isn't farming. Haunt on cooldown for a minute. I think she, well, she got involved in those last two kills for Fnatic. So that helps a little bit, but let's check in on her items. It looks like she's just going for a, a Yasha to maybe group up in the fights a little bit more. And I don't know, I'm a, I really like the urn on, on Spectre these days, especially if you're going to fight. But so far, no one's gone for it. Actually, Fnatic without an urn and well, bone seven again creating space in the bottom lane i think the drums is really good on specter too uh, hp helps you survive more helps you even do more damage with uh with your dispersion too and he really just needs to survive these fights and not get instantly blown up to duel plus visage burst yeah, don't worry. Ogre's, Ogre's got this carry. He's more than halfway to his Aghanim Scepter, the Point Booster, the Ogre Club. 1,400 in the bank. Rise looking for some more kills. Looking for an, a whole other ability to use as well. And maybe the next... I don't know, let's give it two minutes or something if he doesn't die. Or maybe even finds a kill here. They've all smoked up. They're running through the Radiant Jungle looking for Cloud9. But Cloud9 isn't home. They're spread out across the map. Farming some agents. They will find Pylite Die. They're going to jump on him. There's no press the attack. Ignite to go out. And now Pylite Die will fall. Rise. Uh, well, they don't get too much money for that. Like a hundred gold for that assist. Their eyes on the prize, though. They wanted to get Terrorblade, but he has not died yet this game. And Terrorblade, all about that efficiency, or at rather, E is getting fought at the passing of the bottle so he can bottle the up e that DD. Efficiency. <laughs> yeah. This guy. Did they, uh, did they fix the Arcana glitch with Terrorblade? It looks like they did. Where the illusions would still be the base color and you would be your... Because that, yeah, so. the illusion's red now, so I think they fixed it. And Ryze almost has the scepter, as you talked about, just uh, 300 gold. And still, Death Prophet just hasn't really done that much. Still, only one tower down, and she will drop off at some point. And, I mean, they have a lot of burst on Cloud9, too, so I don't know if she's going to be able to survive a late game Terror Blade. Yeah. I mean, do you think it's just these two games sort of being isolated and like best of ones? Or do you think the era of Death Prophet has, has come to an end, at least in the first pick phase? Like maybe it's a pick you go fourth or fifth in your draft now? Well, people just aren't playing that well around her. Like both games, they just completely leave the mid hero to die. And even after three, four, five deaths, they still haven't, you know, really secured her farm. And all it takes is one hero. If you have two heroes, it just completely shuts her down. Last game, it was the Wisp and the Priestess of the Moon. This game has uh, been Pilot Eye. Although he has died four times, he still made her feel pressured enough that she can't do anything to towers. So I would say it's mostly teams just not playing well around her and playing well against her. New fight breaking out here. There's going to be a duel. It won't actually be a victory. And the Legion's going to fall on the tail end of it. Ace, Boulder, and a Soul Assumption to the face. They'll be able to bring him down. Pilot Dice swaps out Hani from running away. He starts running the other way. Another Soul Assumption, though. 276 in red. Going to be enough to get the kill. The Brewmaster Brewlings. The Exorcism's doing pretty good work to bring him down. Ryze does not have that Axe finish. Oh, he did actually buy it up. But he doesn't have it delivered. So it's just working with the regular Fire Blast. And he's going to fall here. Feta, though. Silence now from that AoE Silence maxed out. And it's a double kill for for a rise so if the team fights linger he can find some kills but this is the problem eternal envy he's taking a two three tower and this <laughs> that, DD that is too much damage it does have dd yeah, as well he, he used a dd on his illusions too so he has i mean that's a rex yeah, he might even die here, but not without taking... He says, come with me, to come with me. And, okay, maybe not. Eternal Envy is not going to die. He's starting to run. Hightail it. He's got a Manta, so he can try to survive a little bit longer. There's the Silence going to go out. Doesn't even feel the need to Manta out of it yet. Just going to start running. And let's not forget, he does have Sunder. So in the confusion, there he goes. Manta into the Sunder. He gets it. Ace now in trouble. Reflection used. Slowing him down. EE, though, still going to continue to run. We've got Hani coming in for some support. Once the big high-priority targets... And it looks like they're finally... Wow, that looks badass, dude. His hoof prints and the spectral dagger. But anyways, uh, Eternal Envy silenced again. And finally, they'll find the kill here. But that is a big one. However, they lose their whole top lane of racks, so Cloud9 probably thinking worth it. And Spectre is not making any headway. She really needs a Radiance to try and compete with... Uh Terrorblade's farm before it was doubled. Now it's like 2.5x Spectre's farm. Terrorblade relative to Spectre. And I mean, yeah, he has a Yasha, but the Rax is down. How is he going to catch up and farm at this point? S slower, I guess. Slower. <laughs> I don't know. Half value creeps and harder to kill. It does suck. Terrorblade Still has... waiting on that creep customization, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Terrorblade almost has a Scotty, so all they need to do is pretty much just get Roshan and then just make a concerted effort. 
down the mid lane with a Scotty, and I really don't think Fnatic can do anything about it. Yes, they have like a Scepter on Ogre and a decent turnaround for DP after that last fight, which means a BKB now, but that's just not enough. Too much physical damage out from Terrorblade, and they saw the Panda Ultimate to worry about, or maybe not. Well, now they've used nah, a Hawk to find Feta, and he's gonna actually. Oh no, okay, there's the double stuns up from Rise. We'll stop that primal split from going off, and they're gonna transition that straight into a Roche. So, a pick off straight into a great objective. It well, it'll be nice for winning the team fights, but I'm not sure Cloud9 really care about that anymore. Like, as long as they force a team fight near a Rax, or away from a Rax, and Eternal Envy can just split push. I don't know, and it will be contested here. They're gonna go in. Bone Seven looking for the duel. Oh, he actually gives away some damage to the Ogre. Ogre gonna take 14 out of this. He's got his stuns online, of course. Rise. Oh, the multicast on the Terrorblade. Terrorblade respawns and will fall immediately. So it's two kills, but Fnatic is gonna pull out way ahead in this trade. The carry has a rise. Yeah. Well, that was exactly what they needed. They had to deny C9 the Aegis, Whoa. and giving it to Hani is the best way for him to catch up and farm. And on top of that, I mean, Fada, that's a, that's a big gold loss for him, too. Yeah, did he buy back? Yeah, he bought yeah, back. He did. It's now on that new seven minute cooldown, so it's about six right now. Well, it's definitely a step in the right direction for Fnatic. They're three kills ahead, taking a look at the graphs. It was never a big lead for Cloud9. I mean, just 5,000 gold. Sure, it's it was pretty sizable at like the 14 minute mark, but now we're approaching 24 and it's heading towards equilibrium. Experience, Fnatic, well, they're actually ahead 5,000, but well, the big thing is they've, they've lost a lane of Rex. They lost a lane of Rex because they lost the fight four on five which is really disturbing if you're a fanatic right now. They couldn't take on that fight, so if you add in Terrorblade, yeah, Terrorblade died first last fight, but that wasn't a real 5 on 5 because Panda is usually the one who's supposed to be in there, gets a split off, and then Terrorblade will do the damage that he needs to. So if a fight even goes like decently for Cloud9, then Fnatic will get owned. Oh my gosh, they're going to find Terrorblade again. Uh, maybe they didn't think that was even real. Ace jumps in over on AUI instead. Pilot is there to counter it. Ace might be the first casualty. Nope, still going to be AUI's Visage and Ace. Terrorblade illusions but the melee illusions trying to chase the primal split now gonna get it off e gets back into the fight and i don't know if i feel like fanatic just had eternal envy delivered on a silver platter and then didn't jump on the opportunity they they didn't know whether or not it was an illusion it's too risky yeah it was real well to be fair he did uh lasso that familiar and didn't really end up in anything poor happening for them did he last another lasso another familiar no i mean that one fight that he did and honey actually going for oh, an sny yeah, yeah. too as opposed to a manta or a radiance uh oh, the duel. Yeah, I guess tanking up. I mean, you can't disassemble it into the Manta later, so maybe that's an option. And the recipe is not, that's what, like 600 gold for the SNY recipe? No, there is no recipe anymore. What am I doing? That's been like eight years removed. But it is, it is. very, very rare that you see a Spectre carry without Radiance. Yeah, for sure. Like it, I don't know if it's required. It was required against Tinker, like in six point eight one. I I felt, but not not as much now. It's not so much like the damage output that it provides in team fights, and it's more so that you can't farm quickly without it. Yeah, that's true. She doesn't have like illusions to split push and whatnot with Terrorblade, and you can't push out lanes that fast. You can't do neutrals that fast because none of her skill set really helps with neutral links. Spectral Dagger, pretty high mana cost, pretty high cooldown too. Desolate doesn't do anything for his creeps, dispersion, minimal damage versus creeps too so i mean it's pretty much her primary farming so it's like trying to farm fast with an anti mage without a battle fury i mean it doesn't do it doesn't help you that much in terms of actual fighting but it helps you tons and immensely in terms of farming and honey's just continue to uh, just be further and further behind yeah i mean that's pretty much the name of the game right now as it was fanatic Obviously, they were behind, so the kills are going to be worth a little bit more than, say, even just finding that farm, as long as Hani can be involved in them. But now that they're on level footing on gold and actually ahead in experience, kills are going to be worth less for Fnatic, and it's that farming that they would like to do. Uh, Hani, I don't know, with the SNY, we'll see what he can get done. This pilot is playing all along, and we're going to feed him when we're ahead so that you get less gold yeah, later. Yeah, exactly. I wonder if that would actually be a legitimate strategy. I, I feel like... It is already. <laughs> it's a bit of a risk, right? Like you got to be confident that you can, you know, make the plays and have the better team fight later. But I mean, if you do, why not? Get someone ahead. Get a support ahead, like Crystal Maiden, and just kill her later. Easy. All right, there's the counter of the lasso. So Ace can't really get anything done there. That's gonna be a cooldown for 70 seconds. 
Mid tier 2 tower has fallen, it was the last tier 2 remaining, it went down I think a little while ago here, but gonna try to make their stand, the silence onto Feta, there's the duel onto Arise, they will bring him down, and that was BKB used, that was a 9 second charge, he will buy back, but without the BKB, I don't think he'll have any trouble killing him, he did not pop the exorcism, so Cloud9 now trailing 2 kills, forced the buyback, they slayed the Crystal Maiden, and now they're working on killing some of these towers, Eternal Envy glad to do it, has his Manta available, now will split, throws out the Sunder over onto the Batrider, oh, that cast rate increase that was yeah fun. that's actually a really big buff but obviously we did take away the stun so fortify is going to go out here the bird's stunning aui dropping him on three with the thwomps rise two times multicast on to what looks like i think himself uh okay there's the yule scepter to catch him there's the swap from highlight die gonna apply that negative vengeance aura let's not forget about that aui chasing back and yeah he will fall so they lose the two supports but a fortify was forced that's tier three tower hanging on by threads right now it is actually in deny range and already Feta starts to split push out the bottom lane pretty significant uh losses for Fnatic though in terms of arise dying and immediately having to buy back um spectre no headway poor poor Hani. Tower is under yeah what's his gold per minute actually i'm curious pull it up here we find Hani at 480 experience per minute but only 324 gold per minute and well as noted earlier rise was ahead of him for a long time in net worth he's basically on par with this ogre's gold per minute not necessarily where you want to be looking at ee he's at 550 and their other cores around 400 that's feta and bone seven so explains our explains our charts there yeah, and that's pretty much how a 515 should go for Cloud9, and that was without the Panda Ultimate, too. Uh, granted, Ace did botch the lasso to begin with. His teammates wasn't in a good position to do so. It was pretty far into C9's fortification um, in terms of how they were positioned, and then they had really good counter reaction with the Legion Commander press attack and the swap. But, I mean, Fnatic just can't really get a clean initiate to begin with unless they spec their ult and lasso at the same time so nobody can blink in to save them. But even then, you have Ventral Spirit with the swap. So I doubt they'll be able to isolate someone um, in the clear blink force or blink lasso force uh, the traditional Fire's sense yeah i mean i was definitely expecting batrider to have a really hard time when it came to initiating the big Radiant's team fights and he's proven to have a hard time he had a great time in lane got an early blink dagger now ee in some trouble he's got a scotty he already used up his manta metamorphous illusions though just bringing down rise the carry ogre is down yeah, just to cover my bases was actually a support ogre, but he did quite well. Now the middle racks falling. Come with me, being chased back by the earth, brewing, and there's Bone Seven gonna jump forward, pressing the attack, pressing his mouse there on the Crystal Maiden. It's gonna bring her down mid lane to fall here, and it's Cloud9 trailing by one kill, but leading by two lanes of racks. About to be a third as the bottom two three falls, and this is just the power of Terrorblade, like. Yeah, his illusions are maybe a little bit easier to deal with. His team fight potential maybe isn't quite as good, but he still hates buildings with the best of them, and that's the lines of Rax. Fnatic, they will tap out, they call the GG, and the game is paused. Still worth a first ban, I'd say, for I would terribly. say so as well. Yeah. Especially against Cloud9. Unless you can aggro try. I still haven't seen a, a good aggro try versus Terrorblade, so I'm curious to see how that will do, but safe lane versus safe lane, it just does not work out. They did not have enough uh, resources to protect the Spectre. Um, even though they got a decent amount out of the Ogre and the Batrider on the bottom lane, it still wasn't enough, and I would say they, they, they didn't get enough mileage out of the Death Prophet this game. Still, only one tower down. Yeah, I mean, today, so far in the Summit 2 EU, it has not been a day for death profits that's for sure feta definitely suffered a lot more because at least uh arise here was able to get some farm get some items and you know he had somewhat of an effect on the team fights but yeah no pushing terrorblade pushing all day all across the map every time metamorphosis was available and yeah it's a cloud nine victory so they will split for the day their first two games here in the summit and they